What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a tensile structure shape inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is actually something I didn't know how to do, and I actually found it inside of the Blender Secrets book. So I've talked about the Blender Secrets book before. Um, basically, this is a giant book of ben Blender tips. Um, at this point, it's something like eight, 1,800 pages long. There's just a ton of great information in here. Well, one of the things I found in here is how to create um, a surface kind of like this one that can act as a tensile structure. If you do want to check out that Blender Secrets book, I will link to it in the notes down below. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit preferences and up inside of the preferences, what we want to do is we want to look for the extra curves add-on. This should be built into your blender and you just want to make sure that you enable it. And so when you enable it, what that's going to do is that's going to give you a whole nother list of things that you can add to your project when you do a shift A. So now if I do a shift A and I go to curve, notice how I've got all of these different options in here for different curves. And in this case, we wanna focus specifically on the rectangle, though there are some really interesting other options in here. But in this case, we wanna create that rectangle right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate a rectangular shape inside a blender, but notice how this is a little different than the normal rectangles, right? Because this one has the control points, kinda like the control points that we get when we draw just a regular curve. And so the way this works is right now, if I tap G and I try to move this around, notice how it's not gonna allow me to move this up and down. What we need to do is we need to go into our curve settings and we need to set this to be a 3D shape rather than a 2D shape. And so what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna select these two points like this. Well, notice how now I can move these up and down and it's going to generate a shape when I do this. Now, right now it's not very interesting, right? Like I've moved this up and um, it's just kind of like some points, just like if it wasn't a curve. However, what we can do, and I wanna come in here and just select these. I'm gonna hold the control key and drag a box across this to deselect this. But notice how now what I can do is I can use the G key and I can use it in order to move these control points up and down. And notice how when I move these control points up and down, what's happening is I'm getting some different effects in here because these are curves. And so what this is doing is this is coming in here and this is actually um, making this more of a curve in Blender. Well, what you can do is you can tap that S key in order to scale those points like this. And you might wanna to go to the top down view in order to do that. But notice how when I scale that, it's um, going to adjust the way that that curve is creating this kind of structure in here. And now I'm just gonna take both of these and I'm gonna scale them outward right here because that's gonna scale it outward from a point. And so what that does is that gives us the ability to create this shape um, that looks a lot like a tensile structure. But we've got a little bit of a problem here in the sense that we need geometry in here. And we can't have geometry in here while this is a curve because a curve is just a series of edges, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna take this object and we want to select it, go into the object settings, and we wanna convert it from a curve to a mesh. And so when we convert it from a curve to a mesh and then tab into edit mode, notice what that does is that splits this up into a number of different vertices like this. So now this is basically just a line made up of segments. Now I will note that notice how that does kind of break the curve functionality in here. So just be careful that you've made the changes that you want before you do this. But now what we wanna do is we wanna fill this in with geometry. And so the way that we wanna do that is we wanna use a tool that we talked about a couple weeks ago called the grid fill tool. And so the way that that works is we can do an A inside of edit mode. So make sure you tab into edit mode, tap A to select all the vertices. You wanna make sure that you're in vertex selection mode, but then you just wanna hit F3 and you wanna type in grid and you wanna look for grid fill. You can also go up into uh, face grid fill like this. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to fill in the surface with a grid inside a blender. So this is actually really easy to do. Um, now though, I wanna add a little bit more detail because this is a cool shape and everything, um, but it doesn't really quite let us do what we want. So what I wanna do is I wanna tab into edit mode and I want to hit A to select all and I wanna do a shift D and duplicate it. 
And what you can do is a little different than what I'm gonna do. You could probably just leave it in place and separate it. I'm gonna move it over just so you can see what we're doing. But once we've duplicated this, what I wanna do is I wanna tap the X key and I wanna delete the faces that are in here. So now what I have is I have a surface over here and I have a number of edges that are over here. Well, I wanna take these edges and then I wanna type in an F3 um, in order to search and I want to separate by selection. And so when I separate that, what that's going to do is that's gonna separate this into its own individual object, right? So now this is its own rectangle. Well, what I wanna do from there is I want to go into my object settings and I wanna convert this one back to a curve. So I'm gonna go in here, do a convert to curve. Well, notice how now this is a curve object, which is gonna give me the ability to edit the curve uh, information about this. Well, specifically what I'm worried about in this situation, and I'm gonna go ahead and move this back before I do anything else. So I'm actually gonna turn on my vertex snapping. So I'm gonna click on the magnet, and then I wanna to go to vertex, but I wanna take this object and I wanna move it so that it's aligned with the surface right here. So these are in the same place. So now what I can do is I can go into these settings right here and under geometry, there's an option down below to bevel this. Well, remember, if I bevel this, what this is gonna do is it's basically going to add a circular shape around the edges that are in here like this. And I can go ahead and adjust the resolution if I want to like this in order to add more geometric detail to it. But notice what I've been able to do now is I've been able to come in here and I've been able to generate a surface as well as a framework directly inside of Blender. Now let's say, and this isn't exactly how a tensile structure would look, but let's say that I also wanted to add some posts as kind of supports for the structure, well, what I could do is I could select this surface, tab into edit mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a Z and go into wireframe, and I might actually hide this so I can see these a little better. But what I could do is I could take these vertices, so the ones on the corners right here, and I could actually extrude them down. So I can tap E and then Z in order to extrude them down. Now, notice how when you do this, these aren't level, right? They're at different levels. Well, what I can do with those four vertices selected is I can do a scale and then I can tap Z and I can type in a value of zero. And so when I scale these to a value of zero, what this does is that takes those vertices and it scales them so that their Z value is all the same so that they're level. And so then what we could do is we could take these edges Right, so I'm in edit mode and I just hit two to go into edge select mode, but I could take all of these, I could do an F3 and I could separate them by selection. So remember what that did is that took these objects and it separated them into their own object right here. So typically what you would have in this situation is you would have, um, these would extend up above a little bit. They just look a little bit different. We're gonna keep this simple for right now though. What we can do, so I'm gonna go back into material preview mode. I'm gonna turn this back on, but then I'm gonna take these objects and I'm going to convert them to curves as well. And then I can add that same bevel geometry to these right here. And you could definitely like move them around, right? So you could like scale them out and then add some like, uh, and then add some um, cables or something like that if you wanted to do that. But you can use this in order to really quickly generate a structure like this one inside of Blender. All right, so that convert to curve function is really useful inside of Blender. I'd love to hear what you think about this technique and about that tool in general. I'll link to the Blender Secrets book in the notes down below if you're interested in checking that out. That's a great resource for learning how to do things in Blender. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.